The goal of this video is to show you how to grind a high speed steel tool bit uh, and you're going to use that tool bit to make your lathe parts. One operation you'll be doing with your tool bit that you're going to be grinding on a lathe is facing. Another operation you'll be doing with your tool bit is turning a diameter to length and facing a shoulder. Tobits can be ground in a variety of shapes and sizes to produce different surfaces, um, uh, different geometries. You can use them for threading, uh, internal grooves, external grooves, fillets, radii, rounds. Your book shows you a drawing of a tool bit, top, front, right side view. And what you really want to remember is you only have three surfaces that you're grinding. Those three surfaces are each comprised of two angles. For instance, the top surface has a back rake and it has a side rake. The end of the tool bit has an end cutting edge angle and an end relief angle and the side has a side cutting edge angle and a side relief angle. Relief angles and clearances are there so that the tool doesn't rub on the part. Uh, the part doesn't rub on the tool. The rakes uh, provide for the cutting edge and direct the chip flow. We have a wooden model of the tool bit. This is the top of the tool. And you can see those three surfaces I talked about previously. One surface here on the side, one on the end, one on the top. Remember, each surface is comprised of two angles. So the side plank, for instance, is made up of a side cutting edge angle and a side relief. Those two angles make one surface, not two surfaces. And then on the end, we can see that we have an end cutting edge angle, this angle right here, and we also have an end relief, this angle right here. Those two angles one surface. And then on the top of the tool we have um, the back rake and the side rake. Those direct the chip flow, provide for a keen cutting edge. The relief angles provide for clearance so the tool doesn't rub on the workpiece. On the board here we can see that our goal is to be able to turn down a diameter all the way to a shoulder and then face out that same shoulder all in one operation. Um, in order to achieve this, our side, cutting, our side cutting edge angle and our end cutting edge angle have to leave this material being less than 90 degrees. If it's greater than 90 degrees, we won't be able to turn to a shoulder like that. So that's one of the things you're looking for. Where that point actually falls isn't that important. Um, with a quick change tool post, it's probably better not to have a very big side cutting edge angle. Otherwise, the, uh, tool, wants to, the tool post wants to hit the, the chuck. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to grind the tool bit at the pedestal grinder, which we've talked about in a previous safety tape. And I have a finished tool bit here, and I like to start with the end of the tool, uh, grinding the end relief and the end cutting edge angle. Remember, the end cutting edge angle is this angle defined from uh, a right angle here, and the end relief tilts down there. So in order to achieve that one surface with those two angles, if I go straight in on the wheel, I'm going to have to tilt it to get my end cutting edge angle and down to get my end relief. Those two angles will produce that one surface. So that means if I take my blank here, my high speed steel blank, notice it already has an angle on it. It comes right out of the box. You can make use of that, save yourself some grinding. We can just start with that being our end relief angle, come over for our end cutting edge angle. So I'm going to go ahead and start grinding that. Now the the uh, tool rest is a little bit of a misnomer. It's really a rest for your fingers in most cases in machine tool. We're going to rest our fingers on there, 
hold it and grind. We don't want to let our fingers touch the grinding wheel, but they can become very close, that's okay. As we're grinding, we don't want this tool to get too hot. If any color gets in the tool, if it turns a light straw color, uh, we've damaged the, the metallurgy of that tool. Uh, so we want to avoid that. We want to let it cool as often as possible. I'm going to turn the grinder on now. And when you turn the grinder on, remember you want to stand to one side, just in case that wheel's been damaged. Once the grinder comes up to speed for a few seconds, you know the wheel is safe to use. Once again, you can use one of these tool bits as an example if you'd like. And if you just kind of hold the tool at the angle it's supposed to be at, put the surface of the tool bit right on the, on the wheel. If you imagine this is the surface of the wheel, that's the angle we're shooting for. So I'm going to come in at about that angle. You can see that I'm starting to grind that compound angle, those two angles all at once. One surface. You can see, I think, that we've just started to generate that surface. Well, our goal is to make that surface go all the way across the entire end of that part. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and grind that angle. See the surface is continuing. Now it's quite common for you to get a multifaceted surface there. It's not desirable. You don't want that. One way to avoid that is to when you first go back to the wheel, you kind of hold your tool a little bit loose and you can feel it almost float into the wheel. Once it's at the proper angle, then you can increase your grip and continue on. And you see you've only got one surface still, rather than having multiple surfaces. That looks easier than it probably is. It takes a little bit of practice. I'm almost there. I just have a tiny bit left on the tip. Probably could even quit there because the side cutting edge angle will get rid of it. But I'll just show you picking up that angle one more time. There's the end cutting edge angle. Here again, the top of the bit is my thumb is touching. The end cutting edge angle is here. And the end relief, the top of the bit is here now, and the end relief is right there. That allows you to cut without the end of the tool rubbing on the, on the workpiece. Next, I like to do the side uh, of the tool, which is comprised of, I'm going to show you the original here. <clears throat> Again, this is the top of the tool. We've already done the end. This is the side of the tool, which has the side relief angle. Notice it has an angle here, which allows it to cut into the shoulder of the part without rubbing. It also has a side cutting edge angle. Side cutting edge angle here. That can be zero, actually. It doesn't have to be an angle there. Remember, the critical thing is that when you're all done, the angle between the end of the tool and the side of the tool has to be less than 90, so you can get into a shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what I have here for a tool, look at that surface, and I can see the angle it's at, and I want to make sure that the angle that I have when I'm all done between this surface here and this surface here is less than 90. Right now it's not too bad, so I'm not going to have much of a side cutting edge angle. So, look at the top of the tool here. You might want to label the top of your tool, but sometimes you'll get confused otherwise. I like to hold it out on the end and just push with my thumb. That means my thumb is literally a quarter of an inch from the grinding wheel. That's okay as long as you're focused and pay attention to what you're doing. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a side cutting edge angle and a little bit of a side relief. So I'm holding out the end a little bit this way for my side cutting edge angle and a little bit this way for my side relief. Not that much, I'm exaggerating it so you can see. I'm going to go ahead and start grinding that. And you can see I've started to grind that surface. And I want to grind that until the surface goes all the way up to the top of the bit. Once again, I'm, I'm getting closer, and I keep picking up that same surface by holding it a little bit loose. I go in and I just let it kind of float into place. Not so loose, you drop the thing. A little bit in place, and you grind. I could probably quit there, I'm going to give a little bit more. Notice also, as I'm grinding this, I'm going back and forth along the periphery of the wheel. That's so you don't uh, form a groove in the wheel. You're forming the wheel, then you have to address the wheel. Makes the wheel last longer. I'm going to do that again. Now really, how far you go depends on the size of the tool, how big of a cut you're going to be making. That's deeper than I'll ever be going with this tool, but I like to have it long enough so that I can stone it later. I'll show you how to stone the tool. But right now, I think that's probably good enough. If you look at the end of it, I have some side relief. You see a little bit of a relief there. I've got a side 
cutting edge angle here. I like to have a little bit. And if you notice the angle between my side and my end is less than 90. That's critical. So we've already got two of the three surfaces done. Those are really the two easiest in my opinion. The next would be, here we are, top of the tools are lined up now. The next would be to grind the, uh, the top of the tool here with the uh, back rake, excuse me, the side rake which slopes from the cutting edge back and the back rake which slopes from the end of the tool back in that way. So in order to achieve that, again, you could take the sample tool bit. If you just push it against a flat surface, it finds that compound angle automatically. What I need to do is take the top of my tool. I'm going to put it, if I was to put it flat against the wheel, it would have zero back rake and zero side rake. But I want a little bit of back rake and a little bit of side rake. Not too much, but you want a little bit. Let me just put this so I only have uh, one thing in my hand here. I always like to have the cutting edge on top when I'm grinding. I can see what I'm doing. And so that's zero. I'm going to get a little bit of a back rate, a little bit of a side rate. Now you can't go back and forth on the wheel with this because the corner of the wheel is digging into your the top of your tool right now. So you can see I've started to grind that surface. I'm just going to continue it. I'm going to kind of inspect it at this point. And I might have a little more angle than I need so I can correct it still. Again, I feel it, and I'm going to just give it a little bit of a twist to correct that excessive side rake. The amount of side rake, uh, some people would make you use a gauge and grind to a gauge. I don't do that. Most machinists don't do that. Uh, I just let you go ahead and look at the picture and make it look roughly like it. As long as you have all those angles there, you'll probably be alright. You don't want to have angles too excessive because it leaves your tool very keen. Um, not enough material there and it can break. You see that surface is now continuing towards the tip. It does the cutting. Again, I'm touching the top of the tool. Now I'm getting closer to the tip. The other thing you have to be careful of is the more you grind the tool, the smaller that the mass is on the tip here and it can heat up much more quickly. So you can notice I'm not holding it on the grinding wheel as long each time. Otherwise that little tip, the business end of the tool is going to burn and you'll have to grind it away. Otherwise it'll just break when you go to use it. Get closer. We're almost done. We're going to finish up here. Almost there. If you do need to, you can Dip it in water. I have a little thing of water on the side of the grinder, a little container. Uh, it's better to let it air cool. It's better for the metallurgy of the tool. I went to a, I had a seminar on high speed steel tool and the guy there said never dip it in water. But most people do, but you don't want to have it go from extremely hot to, to cold. One more time, try to get my fingers out of the way for you. Notice I'm just letting it ride on the wheel. Gives me that one continuous flat surface. So now I've got my, you can see at the end of the tool, the top is here, I've got my side rate sloping this way, and you can see this is probably the hardest thing for students to get, is to have the back rake slope into the tool. That's the only angle that actually slopes and cuts deeper as you go further into the tool. So the angle is right there, the back rake. And that tool has been completely ground. Next I'll show you how to stone the tool. Okay, now we have the tool bit which has been all ground, all three surfaces, and you could use a tool bit just like this, but ideally you would stone it and put a little bit sharper edge on it, a little bit smoother edge, better chip flow, less heat generation. So here's a sharpening stone, something you might use to sharpen your, your knife at home. Uh, I like to start on the side, you can really do it any way you want, but I like to do it on the side. So I lay it down on the stone, and if you just push right on the end of the tool, you can see that it finds the proper angles. So I push, now I want to drag that, and it's very important not to rock it while you're stoning it. If you're going to roll this while you're stoning it, it's really better just not to stone it. So I'm putting all my pressure right on the end, and then I'm going to pull it. And then I pull it. Alright, now as I pull that, I'm just about done. Uh, I'll show you a close-up of that. Okay. Uh, 
You can see here where the surface has been shined up and the important thing with the surface being shined up is that it goes all the way the whole length of the cutting edge. Uh, some students are insistent on making that whole surface shiny, which really isn't a good idea. Uh, right now the surface is concave because of the shape of the wheel, so when you go to stone it, it takes very little effort to make that cutting edge shine up. Those two edges will shine up. Once the whole edge is shiny, then it takes a lot more effort to shine it up. Next I'm going to stone the end of the tool. Same idea, I'm going to place it flat on the uh, sharpening stone, apply my pressure, and drag the tool. I'm going to have to do that a couple of times, maybe two or three times, and it shines up like it did before. That surface is done. By the way, that's why we always have the cutting edge up while we're grinding, one of the reasons. That way the concave is going the right direction. Next, you can do the top of the tool. The top of the tool is a little trickier because you have that corner to worry about. So what you can do is you can Right on the way on this stone, make sure you're nowhere near the corner of the stone and the corner of the, uh, the tool bit. Apply pressure and just drag. I'm going to check it, see that it shines up. What you don't want to do is be lifting up on the back end because then you change all those angles that you work so hard to make. So there are all the three surfaces, stone, the way they need to be. Last but not least, I like to put a, a nose radius in this tool. And to do that, you just lay it right on the side like you started. I'm going to start pulling and I'm going to rock it. And I'm going to go to the end and rock it back and forth. Now your nose radius, uh, your print will tell you what the size nose radius your, uh, the maximum can be. Um, you don't certainly want to exceed that. But a small nose radius will keep that from breaking. Um, uh, pressure is force over area and if that comes to a fine point at some distance along that way, the area is so small that it will break. So rather than having it break, you can control it by stoning it and you end up with a better finish. And that's grinding and stoning a tool bit.